okay, okay, okay. We need to pretend like I understand what she say. Mm. <laughs> Before I begin this mix breakdown, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to engineers.com. Actually, let me show you my dashboard. Why not? As you can see so far, I've done 21 projects and I've made a few thousand dollars. I'm going to hide the exact numbers before my helpers start thinking that I'm rich, you know? <laughs> and even though so far about 20% of my work is coming from this platform, that's a good 20% that I would not be getting otherwise, right? So I'm very, very good for that. And also the song we're doing a mix breakdown today for is Liars by Sharona. Sharona is an amazing Hindu R&B singer. She's based in Amsterdam and she found me through engineering com, which is just amazing. And this would be her third song that I've worked on so far, as you can see from her sweet, sweet reviews. <laughs> I mean, that, that's so cool, right? So I want to give a big shout out to Mixed by Ali and everybody working in the background to make all of this possible. My goal is to eventually get my business to the point where I'm getting 100% of my bookings through engineers because it's so organized. Do you understand? It's just amazing. So today I'm going to walk you through my process as usual and show you everything I've done, at least almost everything, because I'll forget some things. To take the song from this. To this. Let's not waste any time. I like to arrange my sessions like this, right? I have the drums up top, followed by bass, the melodies, lead vocals, and then background vocals. So when I'm scrolling through my mix session, I know where things are and I have a bit of order because I like order. So the first thing here is this kick. As usual, I'm not doing much to this. The first thing I'm doing here is using the trim plugin to turn down the level by 9 dB. Because I'm trying to make sure I have enough headroom going into the rest of my processing. And then the next thing we're doing here is this high pass filter up to 20 hertz. Okay, just to round off that low end. Um, and then I am sending the signal to my parallel drum bus. And I'm also sending the kick to my drum bus, which is where I will do my compression as usual. Okay, I don't compress individual instruments when I mix. Because most of the samples you make beats with are already compressed. So my focus is usually just balancing everything out. And then I do glue compression in my boss. In this case, will be the drum boss. And if it's a bass, it'll be a bass boss and then melody boss. That's how I like to work. Okay, but before I do any parallel compression and boss compression, I usually like to balance out the instrument first, which means I will do all of the gain staging and EQing to create space for the instruments within the mix. Make sure they sound great before I even go into compression. And then when I do my compression, I can also obviously come back to whatever balancing I've done to adjust whatever instrument I want to adjust based on the record and also based on what the artist and the producers want. Do you understand? That's why it's also very important to get a reference track when you're mixing. Because if the producer wants the snare to be a very harsh snare, you will hear that from the reference. Do you understand? So you will not end up making your snare soft. You know, that kind of thing. So let's got the rest of the drums here. Uh, we have this percussion loop. Same process. I'm using a trim plugin to turn down the pre fader level so I can have enough headroom. And then using EQ to do a high pass filter here to create space for the instrument within the mix. Right. Because we notice there's some information here, but they are not necessary. And I want to make sure that everything that is sitting within the lower frequencies are just the bass and the kick. You understand? I don't want anything competing with that. So that's the reason why you do this, in my opinion. All right. And then let's go over to the next one, Shaker. Right. So the same process. Doing a gain reduction up to minus 6 dB with the trim plugin. And I'm doing a high pass as well up to 574 hertz. By the way, high pass is the same as a low cut. But don't let that confuse you. Let me just stop there because it, <laughs> it gets confusing. But anyways. And then we have this higher loop. Same process. Gain staging and using an EQ to create space for the hi hats within the mix. And remember, whenever you're doing this high pass filter, you have to make sure you're not cutting into the actual sound, okay? So like I mentioned, after I gain city and EQ it, I'm going to send all of the drums to my drum boss. Let's look at that real quick. That's right here. And I'm using the LE2 to do my glue compression, basically. 
right as you can see we are getting up to minus one db of gain reduction again we're not doing too much we're just trying to glue all the tracks together to make them sound cohesive and just to add that extra punch and if you remember i'm also doing parallel compression for the drums right so i've also sent a copy of all the drum signals to my parallel compression drum boss and i'm using the 1176 compressor to do my parallel compression this is actually what i always use i don't think i've ever used Okay, except the time I used to use Fab Filter, but this is my favorite for parallel compression. And again, what we're doing here is really squashing the signal and blending it with the drums to bring more life to the quiet informations within our drums, basically. Let's look at that. Like it's really, really squashed. So let me turn it off. So this is before parallel compression. And then this is after. Right, you can hear how some of the conga sounds from the conga loop that you're not hearing before or that were not very audible are now really, really audible. You can feel the extra energy that the parallel compression is adding to the drums, which is just great. For the settings, I've set the attack to be a relatively fast attack and I'm doing a very, very, very fast release because I'm trying to add punch to the transient mainly. If I wanted to add more energy to the sustained parts of the drums, I would do the reverse, which means I'll set this to the fastest attack and the slowest release. I have set my input output to taste and i've also set the ratio to the max when you do this you are essentially enabling the limiting function of this compressor right because technically you have ratio from 4 to 20 but for parallel compression you need to select everything and all you have to do is just hold shift and click we selected the highest possible amount of ratio we can get out of this compressor which i think is about 100 ratio one or something like that so now let's go over to the base hey 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 Right, so for the bass, again, I'm not doing so much. The first thing we're doing here, obviously, is gain staging. So I'm using trim plugin to turn down the level for headroom, you know, the usual. And I've done a high pass here up to 30 heads. And I'm also doing a bit of saturation for the log drum. Sorry, this first track is a, it's a log drum, not just the bass. Um, I'm doing a bit of saturation here and I'm mainly saturating the side, which means the higher bass frequencies, basically, to just help the bass cut through a little bit more in the mix. This will be more evident when you are listening to the song on your laptop speaker or your phone speaker, right? You hear the bass cut through in the mix. I'm going to solo that so you can actually hear what it sounds like. Sorry. It's very, very low, but yeah, it's doing its thing. And for the setting, I've just turned up the XL for the side high and side low to the max. And I've set the crossover from 200 hertz to 8K. You know what, let's listen to the log drum with and without the saturation. So without the saturation. Right. And then with the saturation on, you can hear that extra grit that the log drum now has. Off. On. Right. It feels like it's a very, very minute difference, but it makes a huge difference. Trust me. You know, mixing is all about adding little, little, little details to make one big result at the end of the day. And then for the scene bass, almost similar processing, gain staging, right? And I'm doing a high pass filter up to 20 hertz this time around, okay? And then there's one more thing I'm doing here. This is side chaining, right? I'm side chaining the kick to this synth bass, okay? So that the bass and the kick and the log drum can all sound great in the mix, right? So that everybody can have sort of their own space, basically. Right, you can see wherever the kick hits, the bass is going to dock. It's actually always very important to sidechain your kick to your bass. It usually turns out to be that extra thing that you need to make the kick just cut through in the mix. But that does not mean that you cannot achieve great sounding mix without doing sidechain compression. In my opinion, it just works all the time, especially when you're dealing with multiple bass. Because technically, the log drum is also a bass instrument, right? And then from here, I'm sending the bass tracks to my bass boss where I'm doing my compression. <music> You can see again, I'm not even doing more than 1 dB of gain reduction. I'm always just targeting 1 dB of gain reduction because in my opinion, that's a good place to be to get that cohesion, right? To get that glue and also a natural sound because you don't want to compress the bass to the point where the producer no longer recognizes the bass that's in the song. Do you understand? You just want to make sure whatever thing you're doing to the song is enhancing the song and not necessarily changing it, but just making it sound better. And then let's go over to the melodies. We have this lead sound here. 
Sounds very, very good. Again, the first thing we're doing here is a little bit of gain staging as well. And then we have some EQ in here. So the first thing I'm doing here is, you know, high pass up to 68 Hertz. And I'm doing some cuts around 402 Hertz and 564 Hertz. But these are also dynamic EQ in, just to make sure that I am targeting the resonant frequencies that I'm hearing in this sound, basically. Right, that, that and that. Oh, right, just targeting resonant frequencies basically. And then onto the next track, which is this. I'm pretty sure I'm doing the same thing, right? So gain staging first and then high pass filter up to 31 hertz for some reason. I want you to notice that technically there are some resonant frequencies in this particular instrument, right? But I've chosen to leave them because they're not necessarily clashing with any other instrument within the mix, right? There's no frequency masking going on because that's how I make my decisions on what to EQ and how to EQ. I listen to how the instruments are interacting with other instruments within the mix, right? And that's it. And then over to the next track, I guess another instance of the same sound, right? Again, the same process, there's gain staging and then, right. Some EQ in here, a high pass up to 61 Hertz and then some dynamic EQ into target resonant frequencies around 330 Hertz and six, what was that? 881 Hertz basically, right? And I'm pretty sure I'm doing the same thing for the rest of the instruments. Let's check this out. Nice. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm not doing any gain staging per se here. That means the level of this instrument was good. Like I said before, I'll do gain staging if the level of the signal is too hot or it's too quiet. I'm going to turn it down if it's too loud so I can get decent headroom going to the rest of my processing. And I'm going to turn it up if it's too quiet. I seem to be around minus 18 to minus 15 dB for your processing to work effectively. And I'm talking about your pre-fader level and not your post-fader level. You have to remember that as well. My faders are set to pre-fader in Pro Tools. So whatever I'm looking at is usually the pre-fader level of the particular signal. And then what do we have here? I did some filter automations here. Let's look at that. Right. And that's because the reference track came with that filter effect at that portion of the record. So I had to do it. Again, this is the reason why it's important to get a reference track for when you want to mix a song. All right. And then another one here. That's very, very dope. Anyway, so let's go into the vocals and look at what we are doing. Again, the first thing I usually would do for any part of the song is gain staging. But as you can see, I am not necessarily doing that here because the levels of these vocals were great. Do you understand? They're not too loud and they're not too quiet. They were just right for any processing that I'm going to do on them. So if you look at the tracks, you can see that there's no trim plugin anywhere. I just have my auto tune on the track itself and the rest of the processing is happening and the vocal boss, you know, that's the lead and background and whatnot. Hey. So I love about music. It's literally a universal language because I don't understand anything this girl is saying, but I know it sounds great. I mean, she just told me what it meant though, <laughs> pretty much. I'm going to leave all of the time-based effects on as I talk about everything that I'm doing here, but you know, I'm going to walk through my settings as usual. So the first thing on the vocal chain here is the NS one. Again, this one is to, you know, the drill, take out any noise that might be in the recording. Okay. I am not doing anything with it per se. It's just part of my vocal chain. And then I have the curture of EQ here to target resonant frequencies. <laughs> Right. right and again all of these eq settings are 
dynamic EQ settings to make sure I'm not just turning down all of the signals within these frequency range. Very, very important. And then the next plugin in the vocal chain is the DSR. In this case, I'm using the Nectar DS, right? Let's look at that. How does it man know? Make out a face time. But you get right to the door. So the purpose of this is obviously to target sibilants and I've set this to capture sibilants from 3 kilohertz and up. Okay, and I've set my threshold to minus 9 dB because at this stage, I'm not trying to do too much per se. I'm just trying to just tame the first initial siblings that I can hear. And then from here, we're going to the next plugin, which is the SSLE channel strip. Very, very smooth. So let's start from the low frequencies. Now for the low frequencies, I'm actually not even doing anything at this point. She's a female singer. She's more of a high pitched singer. So she's not singing any low registers in particular that I would want to tame in any way. So I'm not doing anything here. Now for the low mid frequencies, I'm doing a cut up to, let's say minus 13 dB around, let's say 750 Hertz, right? or 0.75 kilohertz okay this is another reason why i really like this plugin you don't have exact numbers to work with you literally have to listen and make adjustments as needed which is great because you really want to mix it with your ears as well as your eyes okay you know what let me show you what i'm actually targeting around this frequency range that's, it. that's what we are targeting right that's what i'm taking out with this uh, and I've set the Q to be a very tight Q here. And for the high mid frequencies, I'm doing a cut up to minus 3 dB around 3K. I've set the Q to be a wide Q. And then for the high frequencies, I'm boosting up to, let's say, minus 3, 4 dB around 16 kilohertz. You know, to add a bit of top end to the vocals because that's what the singer wanted. But I also like to split my processing amongst different plugins. So even though the vocal sounds very bright and airy, I'm not putting all the air into the vocals with this plugin, right? So this is like the first step to that. The next time I introduced air into Sharona's vocals to make them sound really bright was in the C6 multiband compressor, as you can see here. But, you know, we'll get there. The next plugin on the vocal chain is the LM76 compressor. Again, the purpose of this compressor is to just tame that initial peak. I've set the attack to be a very slow attack. I'm also using the revision AE version of the LM76 compressor, and this version comes with the slow mode. When you select that, it gives you about 10 milliseconds of attack time, which is great because I'm trying to allow the transient to call through. And I've set the release to be the fastest. I'm gonna try so you can see that there's no compression happening at the low energy parts of her performance basically it's just capturing the high energy parts to just tame the peaks basically the headroom is set to default and the mix is just set to the max so i'm not doing any prior compression at this point i'm just compressing basically i've also set the ratio to four ratio one which is the best for vocals at this time and then the meter is set to gain reduction that's that and this brings us to the c6 multiband compressor now this in my opinion is the powerhouse of my vocal chain because this is where i do all the final tone shaping not final sharp but this is where i do the main tone shaping for the vocals i've set the crossover point for the low frequencies to 91 hertz the mid to 1371 okay and then the highs to about 10k so everything 10k and up is what i'm going to use to introduce air to the vocals from 1.5k to 10k this is where i'm going to introduce clarity to the vocals if i need to and i'm using from 91 hertz up to 1.3k to tame the low mid frequencies basically all right i've also set the behavior to opto so that the multiband compressor can behave like an opto compressor which means slow slash smooth attack and release basically okay and remember i mentioned um adding air to the vocals so yeah this is where i'm doing a bit Bit more of that as you can see i've done up to 13 db of gain here to add more air to the vocals right this is without c6 basically and with the c6. 
ਕਿ ਬੇਵਫਾਈ ਮੈਂ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਤਨ ਹੋ ਯਾ ਨੀ ਸ਼ੋ ਕਿ ਤੇਰੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ
and then we have a delay send this is going to my nectar delay this is set to eight notes set the feedback to 50 percent for some reason i have to mix to 50 percent here and usually i'll put this at 100 and then obviously control the amount of delay with the send fader basically but yeah so that's what i've done there and then the last send here is going to my chorus boss i'm using the chorus to add a bit of extra with the background vocals right and i'm using the doubler four for this i'm actually not doing too much here i'm just using this doubler four voices preset and i've set the send fader out to about i guess you can say minus 10 db basically you know all right that's that right you can hear how it sounds like the background vocals surrounds you it feels very very nice so that's that but i also have one more boss here which is the adlib vocal boss and i'm using that boss in particular for this section of the music where there's this bit of like a uh, spacey feel right let's listen to that The other boss is very, very similar to the background boss. And let's look at the EQ settings here. Pretty much the same. The only difference is I'm not using the chorus sound and I'm using a bit more reverb this time around just to, again, push the ad lib vocals to the background and create this spacey feel. All right, that's what I'm doing there. Yeah, and then I've reduced the high S for the DSR here just to make it a little bit more brighter, basically. So that's everything I've done for the vocals, but there's one more thing though. I usually send all of my background vocals through a background summing bus first. So I have the background vocals hitting this BGV sum bus, and I'm using this Ozone multiband compressor to tame frequencies from 3k to 6k in this case i think 7k yeah pretty much so that the background vocals will always sit below the lead vocals let's listen to that doing here is a very fast attack very slow release i've set the ratio to two ratio one because i want the compression to be very quick i don't really want a heavy compression per se i just want to make sure the compressor is holding down the background vocals just a little bit so that the lead continues to be up top around 3k to 7k so the vocals sit in the mix and i want to make sure the lead is essentially the lead basically right so that's that that's everything i've done for the vocals and that's everything i've done for the record <laughs> If you look at the VU meter, you will notice that we are currently hitting zero, but every once in a while we are getting into that red ever so slightly. Yeah. Right. So personally, I like to use this to make sure I'm constantly monitoring my levels before I get into the rest of my mastering chain. So at 0 dB, we have about minus 6 dB of headroom to work with. It's good to target 0, right? But sometimes you would still jump into the red a little bit, even though you have about minus 6 dB of headroom to work with. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me bypass all the inserts on the master chain. Or, right, so let's... Right. So if you look down here, you can see that we are around minus 6 db so we have good amount of headroom going to the rest of the mastering chain this is how i work when i'm mixing the mastering singles basically the only time i'll do mastering on a separate session is if i'm doing eps but i would still do it like this first and then i would export everything to the mastering session and take all the mastering effects and settings that i've done here into the mastering chain and then master the whole ep as a whole compare to make sure that the levels are good in relation to each song on the project the master chain here is actually very straightforward i have the v meter up top to monitor my levels to make sure i'm not just sitting on the red you know i have ozone 11. right so here we have the first eq 
I'm doing some cuts around 293 hertz, 530 and 2.5k to tame some resonant frequencies. Oh, that's sharp. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Uh, but this is also mid side EQ, by the way. So this is all mid, right? So let's go to the side. See, I'm not doing anything for the side for this record. And then onto the next EQ, I'm just doing a simple boost up to one dB around 60 hertz to just add punch to the key. Right, pretty much. From here, I go into stereo imaging. I like the stereo imager a lot because you can split the bands into four and then, you know, spread the frequencies as you please. Right, it sounds very, very good. I usually don't spread my low mids because I usually like the way it sounds from, you know, the way I've mixed it. And then I would narrow the stereo effect of everything below 100 hertz. And then the next plugin on the master chain is the SPL PQ. This is my new favorite mastering EQ, man. It's so sick. I'm doing a boost up to what that, that's 2 dB around 60 hertz here. Yeah. You know, cut up to, I guess, minus 1 dB around 440 hertz, right? frequencies for the high mid i'm doing the cuts up to minus one db around 1.8 kilohertz right and then i'm doing a boost up to 2 db around 18 kilohertz and i've set the q here to 0 0.375 i've set the q here for the mid frequencies to 3.5 and i've set the q for the low frequencies to 1.6 pretty much you know what let's do before and after <laughs> it's actually quite dope. This EQ has a mono maker. So I'm turning everything from 60 hertz and below into mono just to, again, tighten up that low end. That's that. And from here, we're going to the next plugin, which is the SPL Ion. Again, my new favorite mastering compressor, man. This is a very, very dope sounding compressor. I've set the attack to be a very slow attack because, you know, I want to retain my transient. Very fast release. You can see I'm just doing up to minus one dB of gain reduction. Again, this is just to glue the entire track together, right? And just give it that bit of punch. And then, uh, what's that? I've set the rectifier to silicon. You know, I like the way that sounded. Yeah, I like the silicon sounds. Let me not go too deep into that. And I've said the output about 2 dB headroom is at zero. And I'm also doing a hyper sidechain filter, right? So I've set that to 90 hertz, which means the compressor will react to signals above 90 hertz. This is very important so that the compressor is not just reacting to just your kick and bass alone, you know? And then the next plugin on the master chain is the black box saturator so i'm using this to add a bit of saturation to the overall sound but i've set this to high pen to 50 percent trial is 50 percent as well the pen tool fades into the trial let me show you something let me turn this down now you see now there's no signal right <laughs> Also, the black box is a very, very aggressive saturator though, so you have to be very, very careful how you use it. Right, but I'm mostly using this to saturate the high frequencies, basically. So I've set it to high, set the saturation to 50% as well. The mix is all the way up to 100%. And I'm not adding any air. This is my main focus with the saturation. It's just on the high frequencies anyways, right? But my method has kind of changed though. Nowadays, I prefer to set the saturator to flat, the mix to 50%, and then I'll add some air to taste. That setting gives the song a more thicker feel, especially for Afrobeat. And then the next plugin on my mastering chain is the IM Push. I'm not doing so much with this. I'm just doing a bit of boost up to 2 dB for the low frequencies around, this is what, 37 hertz, just to add some extra thickness to the bass. And then I'm using the clip out function here and I've set that to about 5 dB. Yeah, pretty much, that's that. 
And then the last plugin on the matching chain is the Ozone Level Maximizer. So this is my limiter, basically. I've set the character transparent, output level to minus 0.5, turn off true peak, you know, my gain is at 4 dB. I'm not doing any soft clip here since I'm already doing clipping with the iron pusher. And I've set the transient emphasis to 50%. I didn't touch the stereo independence. And then I set Deetha to 24 bits, pretty much. And that's that. Yeah, I think we're getting up to minus 3.9 dB of gain reduction with this limiter, basically. Let's look at the LU effect value for this record. Uh, We're hitting around minus 11 dB LUFS, which is great, which is competitive. And that's that, man. That's everything we've done for this record. This is a very, very dope record. I'm going to leave a link below so you can listen to the record. And let me know what you think when you listen to the record. Sure, now I'll be in the comment section. <laughs> I'll let know. All right. So yeah, man, that's that. I hope you got something from this. And if you did, as usual, make sure you leave me a like and subscribe if you've not. And if you'd like to book my services for mixing and mastering, I'm going to leave a link below to my engineer's page so you can book my services there or you can hit me on instagram at benny mccauley db okay and if you want to buy my vocal and master preset for logic and fl i'm going to leave a link below as well so you can get them don't worry the process presets are coming okay and i'm also working on putting out mix template for logic and pro tools as well all right and if you're a producer or an artist and you want to record yourself and you have logic i'm going to leave a link below to a free logic pro recording template that comes with a free afrobeat vocal preset or stock plugins all right and that's going to be for now i shall see you on the next one, Benny McCauley out.